Let's make sure we're live. Should we kick it in? And we are. Very nice, very nice. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Today is May 20th, 2019, and we're going to make some cuckoo. Persian cuckoo. We're going to make some straight up rice, and uh, we already put out a video. Uh, just so you know, we already have sort of got a picture here. Let me bring this up for you guys. Boop. We already put out a video, I guess a year ago or so, where we went through the recipe of making cuckoo, Persian cuckoo, and we went and made a sweet rice, rice dish and a couple other uh, things we ended up making and eating, right? Just little snacks and stuff like this. So I had a lot of greens in the fridge, and what I wanted to do is... Um, use them up because that's what i end up doing usually when i'm doing cooks and stuff like this deciding on what to make if there's like lots of stuff of uh, either greens or meat or dairy or whatever it is that we have in the fridge if there's an excess of it i usually try to make those first so we don't spoil any food so we had a lot of greens so we're gonna end up making some cuckoo okay that's my little intro i'll provide the link in the description of this video um when uh, when I upload it to either BitChute or YouTube or whatever other platform we're going to share this on. So be a, there'll be a link in the description of this video um, taking to the original video because that's the sort of the main recipe we're going to use, the ratios we're going to use to make the cuckoo. But I do have you know, a little <laughs> old school scale here as well. And uh, we might end up weighing some of the greens just to make sure you know so you know what it is that we're using i might just go by sight i usually go by sight i don't i i never really weigh anything when i'm making cuckoo i go by whatever greens i have i mix them up and look at the texture and add flour accordingly and then we just start cooking away okay aside from that uh, we're gonna wait a few minutes five minutes or so before people uh trek in archers how are you doing how's how's everything been going man i haven't seen you for a while welcome to a cooking live stream i want to start doing these more often especially for the summer there's uh i end up making a lot well i make a lot of food all the time right x how are you doing <laughs> welcome to some cooking and some eating i want to make a fair bit of uh, cuckoo actually we have a lot of uh our, by, by the way, I mentioned that um, we every year we get uh, sort of CSA going for us, right? Hello, Chicho. I've never had cuckoo. Oh, cuckoo is amazing. You're gonna there, there is a video that we have out the thing that you see here, right? If you just do a search under Chicho and cuckoo, you can spell it K O O K O O or K U K U. It appears like K U K U is the real spelling of cuckoo and the k-o-o k-o-o is like the alternate spelling but i think cuckoo means something else with the o's uh but it's amazing dish it's my, one of my two go-to uh foods that i end up making okay lots of work and overtime i have a daughter graduate oh nice i'm on vacation awesome awesome graduating i'm assuming from high school grade 12 or university right this week it must be university high schools doesn't let out this early so if it's in a week it must be university so it must be a four-year program maybe maybe it's graduate school congrats on that though high school in a week we're in may so where are you located our my my part of the world in canada um my students don't have their final exams until, you know, beginning of mid-June. That goes all the way to the end of June. So they don't, oh, you know what? If she's graduating grade 12, they usually have the ceremonies before the finals. That's right, Arizona. Okay, okay. Yeah, here as well. If you're graduating high school, they have the ceremonies before the final exams. Because by that time, if you're not graduating, uh, they pretty much already know that you're not graduating, right? They start the ceremonies are crazy all the parents and relatives get herded into like these huge auditoriums 
you gotta sit down I've been to a few of them you gotta sit down and listen to people you know their names giving them their diplomas and everything it's, uh, it's like if you're lucky two hour ordeal most likely three to four hour ordeal if it's a nice size university right uh, so let me show you the setup here these are the two cameras that we're using right and we have let me take down this pick okay how are we doing for time we're about five minutes in i gotta get the water going so i'm gonna take down here we'll leave the kit uh, pick up just in case people show up here's the one camera one place we're gonna do some of the cutting okay and we're gonna make some rice here right now and then once we get everything ready for the cuckoo what we're gonna end up doing is using both of these to fry up the cuckoo so what i want to do right now as you can tell i got some water in here so i'm going to kick this up on high okay i'm putting on a max to get it to boiling okay. i've already soaked my rice okay so i'm going to take down this pick of cuckoo that way it doesn't interfere okay take a look at this i've already soaked my rice here i'll show it here right so and i've uh i've strained uh strained it like run water through it because when you when you get rice right away it's uh, it's dirty you know it's, it's been dried i don't know what the process is um but usually you need to rinse it a few times so i ran water over this and you can tell it gets a little cloudy even now when i do this but it's pretty good okay so you want to get rid of the the gook and the whatever there is in it okay so while this guy is boiling let me show you the greens um, that we have right now that we're going to chop up and uh, you know mix it all together to to make the cuckoo right so here let me show you. and as before i did the i did the washing for the greens um last night right so usually you can you can do the washing early i do have some greens in the freezer that i'm going to grab that I, I usually buy a lot of greens and what i end up doing i'm, I'm wash them and then if i'm not going to eat them all use them all right away i chop them up fine for cuckoo and uh, what i end up doing is uh, putting them in the freezer right cuckoo or soups or or stews and stuff because once you have chopped up greens in the freezer and greens it, it's they're amazing to work with easy to cook easy to prep food if they're already washed right the washing part is the main part of what where people don't use too many greens right so let me show you what i got here okay this is our lettuce we're gonna chop this up i have some lettuce in the freezer as well but uh i thought i would you know use these guys so we're gonna use about this much lettuce okay and we'll weigh this this is check this out this is fresh peppermint that we have growing in the yard right so our peppermint's coming out so i've been take a look at this it's amazing it's fantastic peppermint really so like when, when we come into the house in the yard there's a whole bunch of peppermint growing we've got peppermint and mint right and this thing is amazing this would make amazing uh, infusion for liqueurs okay you couldn't keep it there too long and we might end up making some we're definitely going to make some more liqueurs later on but i might make some uh, with mint because the flavor of this is absolutely brilliant and i'm going to throw a little bit of this into the cuckoo mix okay so we've got salad we've got lettuce here okay let me show you the other greens that we've got as well let me show you this one too we got some green onions and green onions i love in cuckoo right i don't know if we're going to use all this uh, maybe not sure yet okay we have and what we've done and again i'll mention this again because i want to show you this uh we've subscribed to a csa right and this is radish tops okay and i'll show you the radishes how we get them right so we've 
committed to a CSA. So what, what that means is uh, basically the CSA is uh, sort of a community supported agriculture where it's a local farm and you give them money at the beginning of the season and until the end of the season every week you get greens and stuff right so we're at the beginning of the season we're just getting you know salad uh, we're getting some beets and um, some radishes and stuff we're getting eggs we're gonna use the CSA eggs like organic local chickens that laid the eggs like a few days ago right so fantastic eggs right but the radish tops you can actually eat. So let me show you the radish tops. So check this out. I got a, we got these ones. These ones are from last week. Okay, I've just picked up these ones. I'm gonna get them every Friday. I just picked up these ones this week. And these are amazing radishes, right? Like just local white radish. So I've chopped these guys up. That's what these guys are here. Okay. Um, these ones we'll use later in some kind of soup or something like this. And we're getting, uh, and we're getting kale from them too. Okay. Uh, another stuff I have here, we're going to make some asparagus, asparagus and mushroom cuckoo, something that we didn't do last time. Uh, but asparagus and mushroom, I'm going to have some greens in there. Um, unfortunately, the CSA hasn't given us asparagus yet. They might this year. Okay, so we're gonna make some asparagus, and I have some mushrooms here that I've already washed and stuff, right? So we're gonna chop these up too, and we'll probably throw in some uh, greens in there, in there as well. Maybe some of the lettuce that I have from the freezer, and some of the parsley and uh, cilantro and stuff that I have in the freezer. Okay. So those are basically greens we're gonna use. And one other thing I have here, I've never done this. Uh, I've washed some carrots as well, just uh, local organic carrots. I might grind these up and throw them in the cuckoo, depending how I feel like it, right? So what I wanna do right now is, I'm gonna weigh the greens. So you guys know exactly how much greens we're using up, right? Uh, and then we're gonna chop them up and we're gonna make two bowls, right? Two different styles uh, the greens we're gonna put in the big bowl and the mushroom and the asparagus most likely in the smaller bowl okay we'll see uh, how much of each we end up getting so what i want to do right now is decide on what we're going to put together so let me put this here and what i've done already is i've already zeroed this thing right so let me put it on here so it balances. As you can tell, it's zeroed, right? When I lift it up, and then when we put stuff on, I'm just putting pressure on it, it goes the other way, right? So I've already zeroed this guy. That way we know exactly how much, or you guys will know exactly how much greens we're putting in. And again, I'm, I'm just gonna say this again. I don't measure, I don't weigh this stuff. I go by sight and feel. Hey, what up, Chicho Dante? How are you doing? Cooking stream. Bug. Um, we're gonna put the rice in here okay this is almost boiling it's good so what I do I usually kick up the temperature for the rice for the water high and then let me move this out of the way for now because we need a little bit of space I don't want to knock things over so let's put this here and throw the rice in and and then what I do I get the water to almost boiling or boiling if I'm doing some of the things and the water starts boiling and the pot starts shaking and it's boiling. And then I kick it down to around, you know, four out of nine or four out of 10 or three out of 10. These are hot pots. Okay. So let me just drain this. Nice. And this is about uh, one and a half cups of rice that I'm putting in. Okay. That way, while we're doing all the chopping, while we're doing all the chopping, the, that's one way you can get the rice out. The rice sticks to the uh, to the bolts, but what you can do is just put water in. And water is a great way to move rice around. Okay. Just 
just be careful the water is hot so you don't want to burn yourself right I have a little bit too much water there right now so I'm gonna dump a little bit of it out let's take this dump a little out that's good it's gonna make a little sizzle sound So we're going to let this cook slowly and what we're going to do is we're going to weigh our greens let's see how much greens we're going to put in here initially we'll probably oops, we'll probably end up adding more right uh, because once you chop them up it's you know you know the, the it's not as large volume it condenses right so let's check it Let's do for sure we're gonna put in this much lettuce, all right? So we have about I'm gonna put on my glasses. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. Uh, about 250 grams of lettuce, right? And that comes out to about eight and a half ounces or uh, sorry eight, eight pounds it can't be eight pounds uh, what is that uh, oh that's interesting so it's about half a pound of lettuce okay so we got that going uh, let's see green onions green onions let's bring over the green onions let's do Let's do four green onions okay so I'm just gonna put this in so after you put the green onions in we're about uh, 0.8 that was about half that was a, so we're about three quarters of a pound about a little bit less than 400 grams of greens right now okay and then what we're gonna do we're gonna throw in the radish tops okay and they're amazing they, they don't have a strong flavor like they don't have a flavor really at all that much relative to the other stuff it's like lettuce but less so but it is greens it's got nutrients why not right so we throw that in that kicks up kicks it up to a pound of greens which is a little bit over 400 grams of greens right now okay now i'm going to bring in some uh, uh, greens i have in the freezer but before we do that i'm going to chop this up put it in here and then we're going to add the stuff from the freezer okay the mushrooms asparagus we're going to do a different bowl and i'm going to save a couple of the green onions for the mushroom asparagus because it will go good with them Oh yeah, one other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw in, let's see. I'm throwing in four uh, peppermints. So the weight on these isn't very much. I'm not gonna throw in the stems, just the leaf, okay? So I'm gonna throw this in and then the chop up will become finer. Just give it a pepperminty taste to it. It is spring, why not? Just a leaf and then we'll chop it up this part is okay to throw in here we'll break it it's gonna be a nice pepperminty taste to it I think it's peppermint anyway I'm not 100% sure if it's peppermint but it's got a peppermint feel it's not just straight up mint it's a little different I'm definitely gonna harvest some of this and dry it up for the, uh, during the summer uh, the way we did uh, what do you call it uh, the other stuff the other mint that we had right so let's take this down let's put our scale over here let's put this over here let's put our greens here we'll chop this up and then we'll put it back into the container okay, the green 
onions and a little bit of peppermint and let's close this off a little bit of peppermint and uh, the ranch tossed together so what we can do right now is just line this up so we stack them together make sure the rice is going okay yeah and rice when you're cooking it be careful because once it starts heating up it, you know the temperature is hot it starts cooking it starts uh, foaming and then it spills over you don't want to do that and since I don't want that to happen I'm just gonna the problem with this pot is because it's got edges like this take a look it's hard to just put it on the side a little bit but I am gonna try to keep it there hopefully it won't fall over and make a lot of noise okay my apologies if it does so let's cut this up so you can make a stack like this and then because you're going to be chopping it all I'm going to do is just cut it in the middle bring this stack put them together that way I'm cutting less right and I like cutting all the you know mixing the greens together and cutting them because it gives it a when I'm mixing it that means everything's being mixed well we're not going to get sort of pockets of mint or pockets of green onions or whatnot you want it nicely mixed together right some people cut this up really fine um i'm in the middle i guess some people will say i'm not cutting it fine enough okay for me it's good i like to crunch Some people would say this is definitely not fine, right? Point your fingertips inward, the palm of your hand, and have the knife uh, towards your knuckles, kind of to avoid losing a finger. Yeah, I know. You know what? I've tried that method. I'm just not good at it. I, you know, what you're mentioning is this, and just use the knuckles to do this. For me, I rarely, like, I've... I can't remember when the last time it was I cut myself uh, because I'm, I'm not a fast cook I just like cooking I like playing with food Zari how are you doing so uh, for me it's simpler to do it this way if I was speed cooking for working in a restaurant yeah I have to learn the thing I'm just gonna put it in a different bowl smaller bowl for now and then transfer it over to the big bowl. so let's throw those in there and then we're gonna throw the bring the lettuce over and throw the less lettuce in there or cut up the lettuce as well right Zari every time I'm at the farmers market produce stand and smell the mint <laughs> you're the first person that comes to my house <laughs> Zari <laughs> nice. that was a huge call for that huh? yeah in the end it's about being careful and paying attention to what you're doing yeah 100 right uh, one of the reasons people cut themselves is first of all they're not used to handling sharp knives and you want a sharp knife this knife requires a little bit of sharpening but you do want a sharp knife in the kitchen uh, one of the most dangerous things in the kitchen is a dull knife right uh, and the other dangerous thing is speed you don't want to go too fast which is the problem with restaurants right I'm gonna put the mint in there. Nice, look at this deliciousness, right? Super delicious. So I'm, again, I'm gonna squish this up so it's tight, and then cut it in half, and then bring it in. So famous last words: "Watch me cut myself," right? <laughs> Some people go really thin with this. 
Do you guys sharpen with uh, whetstone? I don't sharpen with whetstone. I just use one of the things that comes with the, it's metal. What's it like sharpening with a whetstone? Some people even throw greens in a Quiznar and go. <sighs> I've never had ku cuckoo. Is it any good? It's amazing, really. It's amazing. It's you'll see it. You'll see how it's done. Um, it gives you a great mix of greens, and you can make it with so many different things. Like the recipe, the core uh, cuckoo is greens, right? But you can put whatever you want in there. Some people put greens and chicken and greens and meat. I've never done with meat. I like I like making schnitzels, uh, then meat cuckoos. Uh, for me, the this cuckoo uh, with the greens and stuff is is absolutely amazing. And the one that I've introduced, uh, like uh, once I learn how to make the base, is uh, with mushrooms. Mushrooms is something that I've added uh, compared to what I've learned, uh, who I learned from, from my mom and grandma, right? They just do greens and stuff, and they do asparagus every now and then. But I've ended up adding uh, mushrooms to the, whole, to the whole thing, right? Usually, uh, basically for cuckoo, what I'm doing is looking in the fridge to see what greens I have, right? And deciding to uh, to make cuckoo to use them all up hello saint just germany how are you doing good evening to you actually you're like six o'clock right now so that's the lettuce here is the other stuff that we mix together so i'm going to throw that in and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use up uh i already have some parsley and cilantro stuff in the freezer that I want to use up right because I want to make a lot of cuckoo I want it to last for another three days or so so this is uh, and I usually label them this is greens with the thing this is just parsley and this one is uh, Italian parsley. Okay, so let's do this. Let's weigh these greens. It should be the same. I mean, it didn't increase at all, but we'll put this on. So let's weigh this and give you the total amount of greens that we're going to use, right? So again, this is about one pound. I'm going to throw the parsley on. So again, that wasn't very much. It barely moved the needle. And Italian parsley. Now I didn't have any dill. Usually, uh, dill is fantastic in this as well. Right? And this one kicked it up to about one and a half pounds of greens, which is around uh, 600 grams. 600 grams is more accurate more on the needle of 600 grams okay? and that's good that'll give us at least two trays of the green cuckoo okay so let's put that on the side for now let's put that here what i want to do now is is chop up the asparagus 
and uh, dill is really nice yeah dill is amazing can anybody suggest a fun experiment for a group of 12 to 15 year old boys uh, I tutor fun experiments what kind of experiment you want it to be educational Zara I would say board games if it's these are my greens rags right so when I use them I usually just hang them up a little bit let them because they they got a little bit of wetness in them uh, hang them up let them dry and then put them back in the cupboard and use them again right because they're not really they're not dirty so one side of it I know that I roll the veggies in, and the other side is the outside so it stays fairly clean okay. so let's cut this up oh we didn't weigh this uh, let's weigh this let's zero this as well might as well and there's green onions here too so let me take out the green onions tell you how much asparagus I'm putting in okay this is the green onions Smaller the zero scale is zero. Okay. Asparagus. Let's see how much asparagus we got in here. Yeah, educational. Personally we played the cranium last week. Cool. Um, you want them all to play together or can you break them up into groups? Two different groups of board games? This is about a uh, little bit more than half a pound of mushrooms. Uh, not mushrooms, asparagus, right? And then we add the green onions, which was just like two of them, right? So it kicks it up to like three quarters of a pound, which is a little bit less than uh, 400 grams. Okay, so we're gonna chop this up and then we'll chop up the mushrooms, weigh the mushrooms and chop them up, okay? Like seriously, I would say Monopoly, if they're okay to play poker, poker is amazing education too. Uh, gin rummy, if you can put them in groups of two, have a teach them backgammon. Backgammon is amazing. Depending how old they are, backgammon is one of the greatest games there is to teach people counting and multiplication to a certain degree as well. Right. asparagus they're round so they fly off I think my stack is too thick uh, one of the things that I used to have when I had a big space where I had students come in uh, to my space where they were you know I would have drop-in sessions where they were studying and stuff uh, let me reduce the stack a little bit come back here that way usually I like buying uh, asparagus that's smaller but these were uh, thicker I can find any thinner ones small ones uh, but one thing I used to have was a pool table in uh, the area that uh, I had stuff laid out, couches and whatnot, where students would come in and practice, and uh, they would. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm getting lost in the space. They would, what should we call it? Sit down and do their work. I would help them out when they needed a break. I would let them play pool, and pool is amazing for getting them to appreciate angles and physics. I was thinking Monopoly. Hold'em is a good idea. Hold'em is amazing. Poker is amazing. Maybe a little growth project. No, no, no. We actually started a garden. Oh, garden. Awesome. But teach them about healthy food and growing healthy fooders. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Cool. And by the way, if you're doing a garden, sorry, uh, just in case, you know, you're in the process. I knew you were. I'm not sure if you were mentioning you were teaching in mathematics. But uh, if they're doing a garden, you can teach them how to calculate 
the crop yield and how far the spacing of the garden might you know the the seeds or the cuttings need to be and if you need help with that i learned that stuff when i did it with a friend of mine that had farms where we put a set we put out a set of videos on food and farming with the csa and we went through the calculation where you have to uh, do the spreadsheet and calculate crop yield and all that jazz and i i have that stuff all up online uh, on a playlist called uh, food and farming mathematics of food and farming or something so i'm definitely cutting these really thick i made uh, i made my stack too thick when i was cutting them no casa patsia it's my favorite i don't know casa casa pats Patzel, no, I have no idea what that is, uh, Germany. This is good. It'll just be crunchy. And asparagus uh, becomes soft when you cook it anyway. Let's have a sip while I have out of there. I got tea here, but I... Someone mentioned liqueur the other day, so I grabbed some liqueur. This one is uh, sea buckthorn liqueur. You've seen this in the liqueur videos. My favorite dish is kebab, kebab, kebab pizza with garlic sauce and french fries on top. Kebab pizza, wow. Mine is blown. Me too. Kebab pizza. Okay, let's throw these in here and then we'll bring in the mushrooms. This is too big for it, right? I gotta cut those guys up. Usually, you wanna do a little bit of finer job when you're cutting these ones up. Okay. But again, I don't mind crunchies. So. But some people might not like it. Look at this one. I wanna cut up this one too. And this one. And this guy, yeah, this one's okay, actually. It's just broken up. So that's that. Okay, that's good. We don't have to weigh this again, but let's do it again. We've already weighed it. Yeah, that's about one pound, right? Let's bring out the mushrooms. Oops. Let's throw this in there. Actually, let's put this in there. I'm going to chop up some peppermint and throw it in there as well, okay. before I forget. I'm just taking three stems. Index, how are you doing? What do you think about the blueberry liqueur? Blueberry liqueur is amazing. It's so good. Blueberry liqueur is phenomenal. Is there a liqueur? Um, there's one liqueur I made, which crazy strong, which is the, uh, oh man, what's the name of it? Uh, we put out a video where I was sitting outside on the patio uh, talking about geophysics and prepping to make elderberry. <laughs> I gotta say it in one word, elderberry. We made some elderberry liqueur and that stuff is crazy strong wow the flavor of elderberries is so intense so intense we're just going to throw this in here okay that way it's got a little bit of mint flavor as well or peppermint flavor as well now this guy the peppermint you can put back in the fridge so i'm just going to do that so i'm done with the peppermint put it in the bag And sea buckthorn is strong too. That's that. Okay, so let's chop up some mushrooms. Let's see how much mushrooms we're gonna use up. This should be zero with this guy too. They're about the same size. Let's see how much mushrooms we're gonna use up. 
Yeah, this is zero too. So I'm just using white and brown mushrooms. They're the same. So let's see how much mushrooms we have. use it all I do want this to last like three or four days so this is uh, one and a half pounds of mushrooms about 700 grams okay I was being lazy on the couch now I'm trying to blueberry medicine uh, for humans blueberries medicine for humans educational program the other day apparently the the bears eat a lot of yeah they eat a lot of blueberries i've seen them here uh blue you can, if you've ever as a geophysicist you've come across a lot i've seen i've come across bears in the woods but one thing you do come across in the woods a lot uh and you know exactly what bears are eating is their bear poop there's so much bear poop in the woods more before we transfer them into the pots the mushroom asparagus one is going to be chunky crunchy kind of cutting these fairly thick okay let's transfer this into our bowl and then keep on doing some cutting. Where is this? Mushrooms. 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 How's the rice? I'm gonna lift the lid on the rice so you see what's going on. As soon as I transfer these guys over. So take a look. Yeah. The bowls. Lots there. See the rice. So the rice has already sucked up a lot of the water. I left about this much water. Uh, this, the rice was sunk down about this much water. So I'm just going to let this continue to simmer. The water is evaporating a little bit. If you have a quiz now, this becomes a lot easier, right? But you gotta do cleanup and stuff. This way you feel the food. I like feeling the food. Let's move this over. Grind them up. Sorry if I'm not reading the chat gang. I wanna get this stuff done. Once we get the cuckoos in there, into the pans, then We'll just be waiting until they're cooked up. We got five more mushrooms. 
mushrooms left. Let's chop these guys up too. Let's see this guy. You hear that sound? Nice. Again, these are chunky. Sometimes I cut them up uh, a lot thinner. Where usually I cut them a lot thinner. Not a lot thinner, a little bit thinner. A couple of more passes, maybe. And after this, we don't need. We're not going to use the carrots. We have enough. Uh, we have enough stuff here. free up this space here. So let's put this here. Let's move this over. Let's bring this guy over here. Don't do any too much banging anyway. Come on. There we go. There. Let me clean up a little bit of mess I made here. Keep our stove top as clean as possible anyway and nice what I'm gonna do I'm gonna transfer the pot of rice to the smaller element this is on the small element by the way but I'm gonna put it on low and then I'm gonna close oh, no, I'm gonna leave the lid open a little bit let's see how much now there's still a little bit of water there well some water anyway so, ooh, ooh, sorry about that gang ouch that was loud so let's kick this up to the bigger element. Pour the water. Cast iron pans on there. And I'm gonna I'm using coconut oil for this one as well. Okay. Um, but I think I'm gonna switch over for the next little while slowly to grape seed oil. No worries, my friend. Thanks. I know that was loud. It was the 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 mic uh, is right here, right? So it was right under it. My apologies. My apologies. So that's so the rice now I'm putting on about two and a half, three, right out of ten, and this guy here, each one of these pans. Actually, this one I'm going to kick up a little bit higher because I want to heat it up a little bit faster. So I'm putting this one on three and a half, and I'm putting this one on same thing, three and a half, four, just to heat them up. Okay. And I'm going to use coconut oil. Yeah. The one thing with these greens, actually, that's a fair bit. I don't want that much. Let's put that guy here. Mix it. Let's see how much that gives us. Uh, the one thing with cuckoo is uh, it takes a, a fair bit of oil. The greens suck up a lot of oil, the kind of herbs. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going out in the garden with the dog for a while. Let's enjoy your walk. I'll be back in a while to see the finished product. Awesome. I think you'll like cuckoo. It's fantastic. Cuckoo is amazing. Actually, before we do this, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you how to mix, how I mix the stuff, by the way. Let's put this guy here for now. Yeah, 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 we 
forgot about that. Oh, I already heated it up a little bit. Oops. So take a look at this. I'll hold it here so you can see. So this is the greens. I'm just gonna mix them up before I put anything else in there, right? Too quick on the gun, trying to get the cuckoo cooked, right? So mix up the greens a little bit, right? Here, we could do this. I got another pan here. Just put this guy here. I got another cast iron pan. That way I can put the greens on top. And it's not sitting on the element and it's protected. Nice. So take a look at this. I'm gonna mix this up. Now, greens also take a fair bit of salt, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw in some salt. And this, I just eye. Hello, Martin, how are you doing? So how are you going to uh, bind it, Chicho? No flour, I'm a, no flour. I got two different types of flour, I'll show you. Here, let me throw in the rice. And egg binds it as well, right? So this egg. I'm not measuring this. Sorry, gang. Maybe I should be, but go with your... with how much salt you think you need for greens. So that's enough salt. That's going to be fairly salty, maybe. I'm going to throw in baking soda. Okay. I'm throwing about this much baking soda. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to do three, uh, a third of a teaspoon maybe, right? And spread it around. Now I've got two different types of flour. i got brown rice flour. Okay, I don't know if you can see that label. Brown rice flour, my label. And I got tapioca flour. Tapioca flour I'm starting to really like. Uh, brown rice flour is amazing. So let's throw in some brown rice flour. Let's measure this just so you guys know. Here, let's see. Here's a, this is one cup. It should be anyway. Yeah, this is one cup. Uh, let's see. So that's about a half a cup. So let's throw that in because I go with sight, right? So I'm going to put more in that. So I'm going to make it a full cup. Oops, let me do this here so you see it. Come on. So that becomes almost a full cup. So I'm throwing a cup of brown rice flour. Okay. Should I throw in a little bit of tapioca flour? Should be. You don't need to, but I will. I'm going to throw in. This is a half a cup one, smaller than the other one, right? Yeah. They're two different. So we use the big one. So let's use, here's half a cup, okay. Actually, I'm gonna throw in three quarters of a cup. Half a cup is gonna to be too much. This other half we'll use, we'll use for the other one. So three quarters of a cup, not three quarters, uh, a quarter of a cup of tapioca flour. And then we're gonna mix it up. And I mix it up before I add the eggs because it's much easier. So this is gluten-free. Usually uh, most cookery you just make it with uh, flour. Gluten-free is the best diet. Gluten-free, you like gluten-free. <laughs> nice. I know a lot of people that are eating gluten-free. So I've been modifying my recipes. To make gluten-free flour, uh, gluten-free, right? Like we made gluten-free chocolate chip cookies as well, right? So that's not bad. I like the look of that. I don't know why, but I love watching uh, good cuckoo <laughs> mixing for sure. It's amazing because you know what's coming out as well, right, Zara? You're celiac. Let's bring out the eggs. Here's our eggs. Local, organic. The chickens probably laid them like five days ago, right? I picked them up on Friday. So let's put this here. Now I'm gonna move this for now. I'm not gonna break them straight in. I'm 
because I don't want accidentally for any shells to go in there, right? That's so cool. And let's do this. Yep, we'll break it out to this guy. Here, I'll show you. Might as well break him here. If we get any accidental shells, we can take them out. Let me give this a light bit of flower on here. I do like uh, cleaning as I go to a certain degree. Uh, I don't want this to be too loud for you guys. Let's see, that's not bad. So for that, we're probably gonna use seven eggs. Okay, one, maybe we use, ah no, we're gonna use seven. What was the gluten aspect of this recipe? The, the gluten aspect of this recipe would be flour. Right, because most people, uh, for us anyway, we always use just flour, rice, uh, wheat, right? So the gluten-free aspect of it is it doesn't have any flour that has gluten in it. The gluten-free is the tapioca and uh, the rice flour. That's four. That's a big one, right? So these are medium to large, but mainly medium. This might be a double yolk. Let's check it out. So we've got four yolks in there. Is it a double yolk? No, it's a single yolk. Might have been twins. About six. Let's use seven. We'll put seven in and get a feel for it once we mix it up. What happened there was I lifted up the rice lid and there's moisture on top of the rice lid. I took it above the pot and uh, the pan that had oil flying uh, heated up in it, right? And it's only sitting on two, right? But oil and water don't mix, right? So I'm putting the lid back on. Yeah, let's move this guy over for now. Let's put the eggs here. serious sounds let's bring this guy back so take a look at this now we're gonna put this in okay let's turn off the this guy did you check out the heat coming off on this on temperature of two out of ten that's crazy right so I'm gonna put the seven eggs in here okay and we're gonna mix that sucker up let's see how those are here, I'll show you the rice too. Take a look at the rice. Take a look. I don't know if you can see it. And what happens is, uh, I don't know why, I think it's because of the convection, the steam coming up, the rice flakes start separating and start pointing up, right? Everyone <laughs> wake up. My apologies, brother. <laughs> so let's mix this up. I have some greens in the freezer still, right? A little bit of more. So if I think this is a little bit too liquidy, I'll just add a little bit more greens. I have a little bit more lettuce in there, right? And there's nothing stopping me from adding mushrooms to this as well, right? So seven was a fair bit. This is sort of squishy. I could make it less squishy and create more cuckoo by adding more greens, which is exactly what I'm gonna do, right? Yeah, let's add some more. Let's add some more greens. 
So I'm gonna bring the lettuce from the freezer. Let's see how much this weighs. <laughs> I don't know how much this weighs. So keep in mind, we're gonna be adding this to our lettuce thing. So let me zero this. And I'll show you how much it is. So that's zero. So here's another half a pound of chopped up lettuce. Right? So here's our lettuce. Right? We just end up getting more cocoa. Did you discuss the current drama between the U.S. and Iran this past weekend? We talked. Uh, we, we talked about it a little bit. Right? Uh, but I've written an article. Uh, so whatever our uh, total was previously, you just have to add that to it. But um, regarding Iran, uh, I wrote an article. You know, back in mid 2000s and late 2000s, early 2010, 11 or so. Uh, I think the article, this one I put out in 2013 just a mix of uh, some information and I call the article target is still Iran right and if you do Chicho target Iran or Iran you'll find the article and basically uh, target has always been Iran for the last 40 years the target has been Iran uh, with Saddam Hussein attacking Iran from like it's always been Iran and the reason it's been Iran is because of resources and pipelines and geographic location of Iran right cooking stream yeah cooking stream Rundle what are you doing so let's bring this back so we're ready to cook this up right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna transfer this over to another pot while we're cooking um, let me put this back up again while we're cooking it here we're gonna do the mix for the mushroom asparagus mix, right? So I'm gonna transfer this over into this pot. Because it's good having this thing, uh, the big pot, when you're mixing it. But you don't necessarily need it. You don't necessarily need it when it's all mixed together, when it's finalized, right? So here's our thing. Take a look at it. That's what it looks like. Let's just transfer it. start cooking in one pot right away right. let's put this guy here and let's bring out a big spoon this is what I'm gonna end up using right. let's see cool let's heat this up a little bit more let's check on the rice the rice is good Looking forward to eating cuckoo for like three days. Heard of Madman attacking uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger yesterday? Arnold S? Is that who you're talking about? And that's the sound you want when you put the cuckoo in. Okay. A little bit of sizzling. And then you spread it out. This guy here. And 
just dump our mushroom asparagus stuff in this. All those greens look delicious. Just missing one more cute green. The dill, isn't it? So let's put the mushrooms in. Let's put the asparagus in. And asparagus is a strong flavor. Like the ratio of mushrooms to asparagus is a lot more, right? I think it was like two to one mushrooms, but asparagus is a strong flavor. Arnold Schwarzenegger, no. I didn't realize someone tagged Schwarzenegger yesterday. It was in South Africa. A local uh, devil kicked him uh, from behind. Arnold barely moved. Eats protein. <laughs> Seriously, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, Arnold's a big guy. He's been weightlifting for a very, very, very long time, right? Eats his protein. Let's put the scale here. We don't need the scale. Here. We'll put the scale here. So it's the same deal with this. Do you smoke tobacco cigarettes? I don't know. Uh, I don't smoke cigarettes. I have grown tobacco in Canada. It's legal to grow your own tobacco. I've grown tobacco and hung it out to dry and I've given it to friends. And every now and then I had a like tobacco leaf. Uh, I went through smoking cigar phase and I still will smoke cigars. I'm just not into smoking right now, but I do like Cuban cigars. Uh, there was a period where I was smoking a lot of Cuban cigars. I was even selling Cuban cigars, <laughs> right? So again, salt, that should be enough. There you go. We're gonna add half a cup of tapioca, right? We saved from the previous one. We're gonna add. Da, 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 da. Let's add one cup of one cup brown rice flour. Let's add one cup of brown rice flour. Oops, I forgot to do this. For cuckoo, you need to put the lid on. Never forget. For the first uh, cook, when you put it in, you put the lid on. When you flip it, you don't. You cook it without the without the lid, right? So. Initially, when you put it in, you want the lid on. And I'm going to kick this temperature up to about four. Okay. And then once I hear it sizzling a little bit more, I'm going to kick it down to around uh, three, two to three. Okay. I want to put some brown rice flour in this. Okay. Best Cuban cigar are the ones uh, smuggled. <laughs> we used to have a lot of Americans come up here to get Cuban cigars. Let's do half for now. So that's about half a cup. Let's do another half, why not? So the ratio was basically one cup of brown rice flour and half a cup of tapioca flour. And that's a fair bit. Uh, there's times where I don't put this much flour in there. Uh, it'll just make it uh, with the flour, it just makes it more solid, right? And we need baking soda. For your information, I got my Big Mac on uh, Saturday. You got a Big Mac Saturday. <laughs> That's funny. Taco, Taco was mentioning he didn't get a call, so he probably didn't get the job. So again, about a, a third of a teaspoon of baking soda. And we're gonna mix it up and then we're gonna throw the eggs in here. Right. But as far as cigarettes go, uh, no, definitely not. I consider cigarettes companies to be on the same level as Wall Street, on the same level as Hollywood. I try to stay away uh, as much as I can from those institutions. Uh, I consider them to be uh, just destructive to humanity. I really don't understand the appeal of cigarettes. I really don't. And there is no appeal. The appeal initially for people is because they... Uh, it's social. I can't, I can't tell you how many... You know, I can, I guess. Uh, almost all of my friends that smoke are $700. Forget about it. <laughs> well, depends where you live. 700 BAM 
a month could be a lot if you're living in India or somewhere else, right? I'm just gonna put it on the thing. We're gonna most likely put, uh, I got five eggs left here. I got some more eggs in the fridge as well, but let's try it with five eggs, okay? Um, what were we mentioning? Cigarettes, oh yeah. Almost all of my friends that I have that smoke right now, almost all of them, when they first started smoking, they said they were gonna only smoke socially. They would only smoke when they drank, right? And then cigarettes are extremely addictive. Slowly, it became a habit where every time they sm every time they drank, they smoked, right? And then they would start drinking more because they need more smokes. And then it just becomes a whole routine, right? And there's one aspect of cigarettes which is crazy. Cigarettes, from what I've been told really complement some of the worst drugs out there. One of them being uh, cocaine or speed, speedy type of drugs, right? Because nicotine, the way they design cigarettes is for them to be speedy. So for me, early on, I just grew a very, very serious dislike to cigarettes. Uh, I've had very close friends that I've told them that that we used to hang out a lot where i would tell them that listen we can't hang out too much anymore because i can't stand the smell of cigarettes when i go to their place or we hang out they're lighting up every 20 minutes right especially if uh, if you if you're sensitive to the stuff if you're uh, more living a life that's more geared towards uh, sort of entheogens Okay. You become very sensitive to it. Now I'm hearing the sizzle, so I'm gonna kick this down to two. Let it nicely cook, right? I don't wanna burn it. Smoking, never understood that, either did I. Yikes. Drinking to justify your smoking habit, not, not good, not good. What are the ingredients in cuckoo? Oh, the ingredients in cuckoo. Um, this one that we're mixing right now, is mushroom, asparagus, green onions, and a little bit of peppermint, okay? And then I put gluten-free flour, and uh, so we put, I forget how much the weights were, we measured them, so, uh, and this is looking good. And the flour is just one and a half cups of flour. You could have just, I could have just put half a cup. I went one and a half cups, I could have put up to two cups or two and a half cups. So I went sort of in the middle range. Okay. That's this one. Uh, the other one is basically any her any herbs, any greens you want, you can make cuckoo out of. But this other one that we're making right now, this has got lettuce. Uh, ah, you can smell it. Lettuce, parsley, Italian parsley, green onions, uh, radish tops, the green part of radish and uh, a little bit of uh, mint, uh, peppermint, okay? So this guy's ready as well. Let's put this guy here. And we're gonna put this guy here. And we're gonna bring our other pot. Okay. And we're gonna turn up this one. Now we've got the two burners going. Nice, that's what we want. We want double burner action. Let's get this a wipe. <laughs> Can you hear this guy? Right. So I'm gonna bring out my knife. I'm gonna free up the side. Because of the eggs, the sides, what do you call it? Stick to them sometimes. Well, always, right? This one might be a little bit too sharp. Let's check it out. So what I want to do, let's check it out. Oh, sorry about that, gang. My mistake. My bad, my bad. I forget the lid on this orange guy. 
gets crazy hot. That's why I always keep the thing on it. Let's check this out. Yeah, I'm gonna let it cook a little bit more. Just imagine, initially what I was doing is I was trying to make these uh, ASMR style, but you can't do ASMR in the kitchen. Well, you could, I guess, but not, not the way I'm cooking. Right. So let this guy heat up. Let that do that. Let's do this. Hmm. Time for a little pastry. Energize, energize. I'm awake now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got more of the pastry here. <laughs> right? Let's take this out. I've been going crazy on these pastries, man. Just going crazy on them. Super delicious. Super delicious. Fantastic. This one I'm putting kicking up a little bit to about three and a half. This one burns hotter than this one. So I gotta be careful with it a little bit. Nice, let that one cook still. Let me bring out. I wanna put this on the lid of the rice so I don't burn myself here. I'm gonna put this guy on the handle of this one so I don't burn myself. Okay, Dr. P, how are you doing? up a little bit more. I want it to be sizzling when I put it in. Right? Let's bring that up. Less sharp. Oh, I got no, no, I want to use that for. Let's bring this up. Less sharp of a knife. No, let it cook. Okay, now we're going to cut it. So once you can lift it a little bit, you give it a cut. So I'm just gonna go, and I usually just cut it into four pieces, uh, four quadrants, right? Very trigonometry, tri trigonometry, right? Man. That way it's easier to flip. Definitely on the on the chunky side. If you make it thinner, then it becomes greasier because it sucks up the grease a lot more, right? Not a lot more, but there is the ratio of grease to uh, to the greens or herbs, whatever you have on there, is more. Uh, if you make it thicker, it's more like a sort of puffs up. Some people like it thin, some people like it thick. Okay. Okay, this guy. Actually, I'm going to turn on the temperature on this one to three. Okay, because this one burns hot. So let's flip these guys. Take a look, take a look. Now, 
we don't put the cap on it, right? You're gonna leave it like this. Some people say cuckoos gotta be greasy. Really? They say, Chris, you're hungry. They say they want it to be greasy. So when they flip it, what they end up doing is they add more oil. I'm gonna add a little bit just to stay with tradition, right? You don't have to. And then you can just add some in the middle. Just crack this open and throw in the middle. It'll melt and get absorbed in there, right? And then what you can do is just do a little rotation on it. Get the oil in the bottom to cook up. Good, looking good. Fun. Now, I can start reading the chat a lot because we've got the whole system going, right? How's our rice? Nice, the rice is looking good. Rice, I'm kicking down to low now. Okay. Uh, it's dairy free. It's got eggs in it, but no, nothing from cows. So, no dairy. I don't think eggs is considered to be dairy. Is it? I don't think so. I think dairy is anything from cows. Right? No, we don't need the, the, the carrots. So I'm gonna put these back in the fridge. You could also make potatoes, uh, what do you call it? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so it's uh, dairy free. And it goes really good with uh, with rice. That's the reason I'm cooking rice. And uh, you usually have it with yogurt on the side. Sometimes uh, yogurt with uh, with herbs in there, dill is very good. Cucumber is very good. Uh, sometimes you put uh, what's it called? Uh, these guys. Shallots. Shallots. Huh? This is dried shallots. And I'm showing you guys how we use this. No yogurt. You don't want yogurt? Yeah, don't eat yogurt. But a lot of people with yogurt. A lot of people with yogurt. Right? But there's lots of times where once you've made it, uh, it's a, it stays in the fridge for, you know, it stays well for like four or five days, right? Usually I don't like keeping anything longer than three days. So, but with cuckoo, you can eat it like four days, five days later even, okay? But usually mine is gone within three days. I usually cook, if I'm doing a cook like this, I do a cook for three days. That's what I like to do. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, I like this one. What's this thing? I'm kicking this guy, this one down to two and a half. This guy cooks really hot really hot Let's check it out. I shouldn't mess around with it actually <laughs> I can't help it though I like messing around with food yeah let it cook, let it cook. I grew up in Hong Kong so I got used to uh, an Asian, yeah, an Asian diet. Asians have very little dairy. From what I heard though, there's a lot of dairy going into uh, China, specifically from Russia now. So Russia's providing China with a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of cheese from what I've heard. It's crazy that a certain part of the world barely has barely consumes dairy as far as ratio go right european dairy is huge cheese is huge 
Middle in Middle East, uh, cheese is big, but yogurt is huge. Yogurt is really big in the Middle East and in, in Iran as well. In Iran, yogurt is huge. And I'm pretty sure with India as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these quarters again, right? Because it's easier to flip once it's like that. So oh, I got rid of the sharp, sharp knife. Now you don't really need a too sharp of a knife once you start cooking it. Once it's cooked to a certain degree. See what it's like. That why they live so long. Uh, in Asia, there's a lot of uh, uh, cases of uh, people living a long time in uh, in some of the mountainous regions in Europe as well. But that's mainly because uh, of their like diet for sure, but because they eat a lot of greens, a lot of herbs. The color of this is fantastic. Look at that. Looks delicious. Let's check out this one. up really thick. Nice. Let's cut this up. You can even flip it with the with a fork, should be able to anyway. The mushrooms becomes a little bit lighter, the color on them, right? So what I'm going to do right now is bring this out. Let's see if we can put this here. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. So I got this thing here. I'm going to start putting the cuckoos in this. Okay. Transfer them over and I'll show you guys. Accidental falls and flips. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh, oh. Cuckoo's falling apart. So as soon as it, uh, you remove the cuckoo, the cast iron pan starts uh, burning up the oil because there isn't anything else in there to burn, right? So I lift it up usually and I put the oil in there, okay? So let me show you how much oil I'm going to put in here. I'm putting this much more oil in here, okay? And then pretty much right away, once it melts, you want to put the cuckoos in there, the greens, okay? Here's our cuckoo so far, right? So I put four 
on either side. It's a little bit crumbly right now. It's not the best looking cuckoo, but it's gonna taste fantastic. That's a fair bit of oil, but that's okay. We'll make this one like. We're gonna bring this. Give it a little mix before you put it in again. Okay. So I'm putting three of these spoonfuls in here. So far, I'm gonna put more. Spread it out. Right. Should we put the whole thing? Let's put a little bit more. Okay, nice. I have a little bit left here. I'll mix it up with uh, mushrooms and stuff. Good enough. So what we want to do is put the lid back on this guy. Let it cook away. Okay, this guy should be ready. So I'm gonna cut it into four pieces again. <laughs> Is anyone cooking along with Chicho? <laughs> For this one, I didn't really didn't list the ingredients what we're gonna cook. But if you have greens, you what the rice looks like. This rice making lots of noises. Take a look. Flaky. Nice. Nice rice. Let's put this guy here. Let's put this in a little bowl. I like rice. I eat a lot of rice. Staple diet. Part of a staple. A lot of people put uh, salt on their rice. I don't. See how flake it is? Long grain sticks out. This will be amazing in the. In the in the in the oven cooking rice persian style very good let's do this Just eating good, good. Mm. Very good. Very delicious. Take a look. Wow. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's check these guys out. Crumbly. Quote me. I really need some food now. Nope, Martin. Wishing I was anxious. <laughs> smelling the cuckoo. <laughs> I'm gonna eat some more cuckoo.
Fantastic. Super delicious. I'm at work, so sitting in the office doing paperwork. Paperwork, don't you have any? You must have some snacks, Martin, do you? Just the taste of fresh greens is amazing. And I love the peppermint flavor in there. Very good. I think this is the first time I've ever thrown peppermint in there. I'm pretty sure it's the first time. Oh yeah, super good. In season from now on, we put peppermint in our cuckoos. Peppermint from the yard, we love it. Okay, this guy must be done. Let's check it out. Crumbly, crumbly. I work in a pub, my you know, burger. Nice, nice. And a drink. ones mushroom asparagus ones in this okay question is how do we manage this so we don't destroy things I'm gonna do this over here so I, I, if I make any noise I won't blow out your ears game Again, I'm putting in about this much oil. Okay. Put this in. I'm gonna zoom around, put it in the middle so it spreads out. You might crack it a little bit. Oh, this one's getting crispy. This one needs attention. Oh, look at that. That looks great. Okay, before we give this one attention, we're gonna put the uh, mushrooms in this. So let's do that. Give it a little mix and throw it in. This is like chunky cuckoo. <laughs> I 
my mum and grandma would be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You can't make it this chunky. Because when it's chunkier too, it doesn't stick together as well, right? That's one of the reasons. So let's put the lid back on here and we'll take care of this guy. Where was our cut? thicker I don't want it to burn cooking for a, a time <laughs> for chat as well you guys are welcome to come over teleportation <laughs> cooking for everyone cooking for everyone cooking for everyone i'm making enough to have enough food for like three days okay and we have a friend coming over tomorrow so i want to make sure there's plenty plenty to eat for everyone i'm on my way <laughs> this one take a look at this one this one is a mushroom one okay Let's taste the mushroom one. Mm. Very good. Here's a mushroom one. Very good. And the salt is good. Okay. It's a little bit crumbly again because I made it chunky. And, uh, and the gluten free flour as well. Right. With a little bit of rice. I'm not eating with yogurt right now, so. It tastes amazing the way it is. God knows I love salt. Maybe a bit too much, yeah. That's one thing I did was I realized we were adding not too much salt in our diet, so just cooking slowly I started reducing the amount of salt. And I realized I didn't need that much salt. I gotta do the same thing with sugar. Mm -hmm. Yogurt is dairy, yeah. So in your honor, Martin, no dairy today. <laughs> Super delicious. The mushroom one with the asparagus is really good too. Yeah, I hate sugar. The only sugar I get is in my body is when I drink glasses of cocoa. Oh, cocoa! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Coca Cola is poison. Really, it's crazy. Coca Cola is so bad. 
pH of like three. It's like, wow. Which one do you want to eat? Let's have some more mushroom. And you, when you make kukui, you sometimes get like little crumbles of them, like leftovers, they fall apart and stuff. They're really good because they become crispy. It's not that often though. <laughs> Sometimes we all feel the urge to be a bit unhealthy. Yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. And it's good to test the system, right? Mm. I'm really liking the mushroom one. Very good. I wish I could share with you guys. One day when we get large, when what we're creating here is large, we've got a huge audience and I have enough revenue flow, we'll throw a gigantic cuckoo party and invite everyone over. If you can come over, Chicho will cook, cook you cuckoos. Never at the same time. I rotate my diet between sugar and fat. <laughs> Very delicious. Oh yeah, look at this one. These are great. Looking good, looking good. Oh yeah. Looks fantastic. Oh yeah. Okay. I gotta cut these guys. almost don't want to cut them and you don't really have to but it cooks better on them in the center just lets a little bit of the fluids out and gets the heat in the middle part and it makes it bite size right super how's this guy doing You know what, I'm going to add a little oil to this one as well. Why not? So this dish is heavy on the oil, for sure. You know?
more. Uh, this is good. Take a look. This is what you want. Right? Standalone. Right? The, the first one was a little crumbly because, again, the gluten free stuff and whatnot. And I made them thinner. Right? So, for because of the gluten free and <coughs> the cutting them up a little bit too thick, thinner, it wasn't holding together. Make them thicker, it holds together better. Right? So, I'm going to turn off this pan. Okay. And we're going to transfer the cuckoos over to here. for a few days. Nice. Life is good. <clears throat> okay, perfect. That's that guy. Where are we going to put this guy? Actually, we're just going to leave it here. It's already off, so we'll put it on the side. A little bit off the burner and make sure it's not going to be burning. Take a look. This is how much cuckoo we ended up getting. Here, I'll show you. Right. So how many pieces? Well, we made two of these, so there was a total of uh, eight pieces of pop. So we got sixteen of these squares, or not squares, triangles, right? Mm -hmm. So we got about sixteen of these guys, yeah. like this, right? And if you're serving someone, it depends what else is in there. Two with a little bit of rice and salad and stuff is perfect. Uh, even one is perfect, depending on the size. Sometimes three, within by four, whoever you're feeding, four is plenty, right? Cool. Let's check out this one. We got, uh, so what I'm gonna do now is, let me show you this. So take a look. We have this much of the mushrooms and very little of the greens left. So I'm gonna put them all together, mix them up and make another another bowl. Okay. So we don't need this guy anymore. Let me do this here. Change the color easily, I reckon. I added a couple of ingredients to make it look like olive oil. I lost the conversation, not sure what's going on. Let's check this out. Oh, that looks good. Okay, let that cook while we mix up this guy. Okay, let's put that guy there. We need, oh, here's a fork. This fork. Let's put this guy here. So this is what we got, take a look. So I'm just gonna mix this up and just pour it into this guy. So I'm gonna turn the heat back on on this one. And mix this up and pour it in. Should we put more oil? Uh, nah, it doesn't need it. I'm just gonna pour it in like this. We'll add oil on the flip. Okay. 
Let's put it on. I'm putting this guy back on too again. Okay. And this is going to be crumbly as well because it's a little bit on the thinner side. Nice. So what I want to do is, oh, let's put the lid back on that guy. Let's put the lid on this guy again. Let this one cook. And we're going to cut this guy up. The smell is amazing. The mushroom one is seriously crumbly. Just because I didn't cut them up very thin. Right. Cool. That's good. So, let's bring this over. Let's see if we can do it with this guy. Doesn't look as professional as it usually does, but the taste is fantastic. And I'm going to turn this off now. We don't want it to burn. We've got another platter full of mushroom and asparagus cuckoo. Now I'm going to grab this one and put it in my bowl and munch away at it. Tastes fantastic. And I'm going to turn the rice off as well. The rice is done. Oh yeah, the rice is happy. Happy rice. Use your spatula to make your triangles, not the knife. Saves your pan, and you won't, uh, you won't, you won't cut into the coating and make it. Uh, come loose during cooking. Yeah, someone else mentioned this as well. I go fairly gentle with the cutting on the thing, but I guess so you get micro cuts in there. Um, the problem with the spatula is um, when you go straight down, I gotta, I gotta get a better spatula for that, a little bit sharper so I can just go straight down on it. Good advice, good advice. It is St. Martin. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm gonna put on my glasses for your name. Let's check it out, the silk. Sik Kasar Aramanan. I got your back. Nice. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Let's check out this one. How's this guy doing? Oh, this guy's cooking slow. I'm going to kick this up to a four. We don't want to be cooking that slow. Right? We'll stick to the pan. Here's the mushroom guy again. Look at that deliciousness. Right? Very good. We need some rice with this guy. Let's put in some rice. and cuckoo do you use any sauce to this or that's a no no um, I haven't uh, the only sauce is yogurt and as far as sauce goes uh, usually I just use straight up yogurt but uh, 
yogurt and dill is amazing yogurt uh, with cucumbers is amazing yogurt with cucumber and dill together chopped up is amazing like it's a great uh, um, jajik in Armenian we call it jajik I think in Russian too it's called jajik so the sauce with this is usually just a uh, yogurt sauce it's a dairy sauce All right like for example okay Martin we're, we're adding yogurt to this I even had a bowl of yogurt put aside uh, to bring out. But basically, just a little yogurt in your... Usually it's... Uh, well, I don't want to say usually. It's, there are times when, when you're just eating a quick snack, you have it in a bowl, but usually you have it in a plate with the kuku on one side, rice on one side, a little bit of... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, salad a little bit of fish this goes amazing with fish no <laughs> yeah dill and cucumber with yogurt is a good one yeah so basically like this right see the glare the yogurt and you just take a little bit of yogurt and rice and cuckoo fantastic together really sorry mark not too much well, it depends. Some people like a lot, some people don't. No, I have this one cooked stuff. So how much food do we have here? We've got two platters full. Nice. Job well done. So two platters full, it'll feed It'll feed us for at least four days. That'll be the core, uh, our core dish. To, and then on the side, we either have yogurt, rice, salad. Um, I don't feel like eating any meat right now, so probably won't have any meat, uh, but maybe. And for us, uh, there's gonna be three of us here. So that's enough food for three people for uh, three days. You seem like you eat pretty healthy food, you show. I try to, I try to. Potato fish, burn the potato fish. Burn potato fish. I try to burn potato fish. And of course I do, you know, I do have a sweet tooth, but I try to eat homemade pastries, right? As you get older, you realize you can't process crap as well as you could when you were younger. So you don't want to eat unhealthy. It'll, oops, sorry. It'll catch up to you. Here, let's try a spatula cut. Let's do a spatula cut. Actually, before we do a cut, I gotta go around this thing. Free that up. Okay, I'm going to kick up the temperature on this guy a little bit. Putting it on full on four. I'm going to put the lid back on it. Where did the lid go? Oh, here it is. I'm going to go back to eating. Yeah, I'm 45. Can't eat like I used to. No, I don't want to eat like I used to. I need to try as well. I'm trying to kick my soda have it right now um, burnt potato fish I highly recommend not drinking soda I stopped drinking coke and stuff about 20 years ago okay for and before that I I would I would drink a lot of coke and just garbage uh, once I stopped drinking coca-cola for 18 years I didn't have any cavities before that I would get a lot of cavities so, you know, it's not a scientific proof, but drinking something with an acidity of three, I believe, is not a good thing to have on your teeth. Okay, it's poison, really, Coke. You only have one body. Try to take care of it. 
Uh, I know most people don't think like this when they are young. That's why we should guide the future to be more healthy, 100%. That's one thing I tell all of my students. Eat healthy, eat healthy. Because kids, they eat crap because they're bombarded with crap. Our truth, are you planning on any more live streams this week? Um, most likely Friday, Saturday. We're gonna do a Friday, Saturday tag team. Uh, Friday, most likely current events. Saturday, most likely uh, mathematics. Okay, uh, I haven't set in stone because I just need to organize what we've done right now with the live stream, with the video shoot and stuff like this, but most likely Friday current events, Saturday uh, mathematics, okay? Funny you say that because I'm actually having issues with my teeth right now. Probably the reason. Uh, dude, try it out. Like, really, I have a lot of cavities when I was younger. Once I stopped drinking Coca-Cola, like, as soon as I stopped drinking Coca-Cola, and I'm pretty sure I implemented a few other things, I didn't have cavities for 18 years. And before that, I would get a cavity in a year, minimum, right? Stop drinking Coke. And it's not because it tastes crap. Like, I still crave Coke every now and then because Coke and cheese puffs, amazing together. But why am I eating poison? That's how you kill rats, right? You make the poison taste good. I'm not a rat. sure if this is gonna to work too well but don't oh yeah I floss a lot I hope you guys do as well flossing is key let's see what do we got here this guy is in need of a flip <laughs> oh yeah look at that and then we're gonna add the oil remember we didn't add the oil to this when we put it in right so it's in need of an oil. It's a little bit dry. oil as I'm adding, you could just have it dry. Be careful with the cast iron pan. You don't want to burn yourself. Because the handles get really hot as well, right? And I'm going to kick down the heat on this. I'm kicking it down to a two. Okay. Flossing is more important than brushing. I would say just as important. A lot of people say, uh, dentists say more important, but brushing is a great sensation. When you've got clean teeth, you go, shh, oh, it's amazing. Let's have a green cookie. Just because I wrote more uh, important doesn't mean you should stop brushing 100%. Those two things go hand in hand very, very well, very well. Martin, I'm going to add one more scoop full of yogurt in there. The peppermint. I'm liking the peppermint in the green one because I added more in the green one, I think. I'm really liking the peppermint in this. 
or mint. Right. Try not to eat over on top of the pan, right? I don't want any of my thing here falling in there. I have to go back to work. Table of 30 has arrived. Oh, wow. And stop adding yogurt. <laughs> have a good time, Martin. Thanks for being here. We're almost at the end anyway, as soon as this guy is done. Well, this guy is done, basically. Hope you have a fantastic day, brother. Cheers from Canada. I hope you guys eat well today. Look at that goodness. Look at that thing. So good. I'm going to watch a movie and then get some sleep. Great and interesting stream. See you another time. See you another time. Thank you for popping by, brother. And thank you for all the advice. Especially regarding the the knife. It worked well with the spatula. How many did I of these did I eat? these ones too. So once you flip them, let them cook for a bit and then cut them into the eighths. Right. Delicious. So take a look. Let me show you what we ended up getting. All right. We got this pan going. So there's eight of them here. We got this guy going. So there's whatever amount here. There's eight here, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen here. So I've already eaten two of these guys, right? So that's eight, fourteen. Well, hold on, let's do the count. How many we have? There's eight there. There should have been sixteen there. And there's and these are the mushroom ones. Right, so the mushroom ones are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So I ate two mushrooms and two greens. So I ate four cucumbers <laughs> while we're doing this. So sixteen and sixteen is thirty-two. Add another eight, you got forty pieces. So what we ended up doing created forty of these squares, and everybody eats differently. So if you're thinking about feeding a lot of people, this should do it. Uh, everybody gets two pieces that's 20 people you could feed plus a little salad and yogurt or whatever if you want to feed four to each person like the way I did mm, four mm, four cuckoos uh, then you can feed 10 people right and if there's three of us eating this will last us if you do the mathematics right if we eat three a day or four a day four a day I guess then for three of us it'll last minimum of three days Here's a sea buckthorn, by the way. Show you this. 
in the liqueur. Here are the sea octopus. They're really good, they're pungent tasting. Very pungent, but they're supposed to have amazing oils and stuff. Ooh, ooh, strong. Yeah, look at that. That looks delicious. Look at that. That's what we're talking about. Crispy. Ooh. Okay, I'm turning this guy off too. Okay. I'm gonna remove the lid here, put this guy on top of here so it doesn't cook anymore. Now I'm hungry. Good, good. Good, good. There aren't too many places where you can buy cuckoo that's really good. Homemade cuckoo is the best. Homemade cuckoo is the best. Okay. Let me turn off this guy. Which camera do we have here? Did I pick the right one? Nice. And I got a whole bunch of dishes I gotta do and stuff. I gotta take care of those later. I gotta go see a student in about 15, 20 minutes. I gotta go teach some mathematics, okay? And for those of you guys uh, that are a little late on this, if you're tuned in at the, you know, halfway through or past the beginning, this is what we ended up making, cuckoo. We already did a live stream uh, about a year ago or so. And the recipe for the cuckoo that we made in that stream is in the description of the video and that stream we did is sort of ASMR math related. We brought up the chalkboard and we did the ratios and stuff like this, how much of each we were using. For today's stream, we just weighed the stuff and decided to do it that way. And we'll keep on making cuckoo and slowly once you start making cuckoo more often, you know what the texture is, what you want. And you can mix any type of greens you want in your cuckoo. It's amazing. Everybody should be eating more greens than they are, okay? Well, almost everybody. There are some people that just eat just salads, which isn't, you know, you don't want to just eat salads. You need a little protein in there too, right? But this is a great way to get some amazing greens into your system, okay? Aside from that, gang, thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm glad we got this done. Now I don't have to worry about cooking or think about cooking. It's one good thing to do when... Uh, when when you do cook when you cook for two or three days you don't have to think about what else to cook right you're just thinking about the side stuff once you got the main course down right and this is what this is for us right now it's the main course um okay hope you have a fantastic sunday gang archers thanks chicho good to see you again i will definitely try to check in on friday and saturday have a awesome week take care you too brother you too hope you guys have a fantastic week as well and uh, hopefully we get a little bit of more quiet period in regards to news and stuff either way we're going to do a little bit of current events most likely on friday just to catch up with things um, and we're probably going to do current events until the end of the school season which is going to be at the end of june after that i'm probably gonna or next month just to let you know next month i'm probably going to put out a video uh, giving people my take regarding the election and world politics and stuff because I know those questions are going to come my way so I'm going to preemptively create a video for it because that's exactly what happened for the 2016 elections so I don't want to deal with all those questions coming in I'm just going to make it because it's obvious where we're going to a certain degree for me anyway for the next five to ten years so most likely I'll make a video to address some of the things I'm on mind and then for after that, we're going full on into food, comic books, and mathematics. And a lot of it is all going to be ASMR. Okay, majority of it is going to be a ASMR. Okay, just giving everybody a heads up. Okay, have a fantastic week, everyone. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next stream. Bye for now.